Okay, let's talk about this number one. It was um, part of the homework you, that you had. So, a ratio of cups of water to cups of milk in a recipe is one to three. They want us to write three equivalent ratios. Well, my W would be my water to milk. Milk. What do I know? I know I have one cup of water for every three cups of milk. I need equivalent ratio. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. That's my unknown. So all I'm going to do for equivalent ratios is multiply by a fraction equal to one um, using identity property to change these ratios um, so that they are renamed into equivalent ratios. So one over three, I'm going to multiply that by two over two. And two over two equals one. So the value does not change. So one times two is two. Three times two is six. My first equivalent ratio I made is two six. Then I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 ninths is an equivalent ratio. And now I'm going to multiply by 4 over 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 twelfths is another equivalent ratio. So I kind of multiplied 1 over 3 times any number over itself, and I would get an equivalent ratio. I could use 10 over 10, 100 over 100, 5 over 5. I will come up with equivalent ratios. So these are three of the possible answers, that, but there are definitely more. You, it, there's endless possibilities there, okay? Okay, so this one, we're talking about flower bouquets here. So it says in each bouquet of flowers, so in every bouquet, there are four roses and, and six white carnations. They want us to complete this to figure out how many roses and carnations are in four bouquets. Well, this is one bouquet, right? This would be two. This would be three. This would be four. This would be five, right? So one bouquet, there's four roses and six carnations, okay? So if I put two bouquets together, that means I need to take my four six and I need to multiply. So this is roses and this is carnations. What am I figuring out? Two bouquets. That means I need to multiply by two over two. So four times two is eight. Six times two is 12. This has to be eight and this one would be 12. Okay. So now what do I want to know? Well, now I want to know how much would three bouquets have. So that means I need to multiply by three over three. Four times three is 12. Six times three is 18. So I would have 12 roses and 18 carnations in three bouquets. Now I want to know how many are in four bouquets. So again, I have four bouquets. So I need to multiply by four over four. Four times four is 16. Six times four is 24. 16 and 24 and then we might as well just fill in the last part of the table right so the fifth bouquet I'm gonna multiply by 5 over 5 we'll have 20 roses and 30 carnations now it asked how many are in four bouquets so in four bouquets I have 16 roses and 24 carnations. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We're just using equivalent ratios to fill in this table. And if you look, your roses, you're adding four each time, right? Four plus four is eight, eight plus four is 12, 12 plus four is 16, 16 plus four is 20. If you look at the carnations, you're doing the plus four also, or I'm sorry, plus six. 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18, 18 plus 6 is 24, 24 plus 6 is 30. So that's sort of like the rules that you learned for your XY tables last year. Or it exactly is that. Okay? So that's how we figure out number um, 2 from your homework last night. All right. Here we have a collector has 120 movie posters and 100 band posters. She wants to sell 24 movie posters, but still have her poster collection maintain the same ratio of 120 to 100. If she sells 24 movie posters, how many band posters should she sell? 
Well, what do we know? We know that this collector has 120 movie posters and 100 band posters. She's going to sell 24 movie posters, but she still wants her, her poster collection to maintain the same ratio of 120 to 100. So we need to figure out if she sells the 24 movie posters, how many band posters should she sell? Now, the most common mistake I see with this problem is you just subtract 24 from each. And you can't do that because then your ratio is not proportional. Okay? So we're going to start with writing down what we know. Well, we know we're talking about movie posters, right? Those would be my words. And band posters. And what do we know about those? We know that she has 120 movie posters for every 100 band posters, right? What are we trying to figure out? <coughs> well, that word I circled here, sell. Sell should indicate to you that you're going to subtract, okay? So she's going to sell 24 movie posters. That means she's going to have 24 less. So if I take 120 and I subtract 24 from it, I get 96. So what is unknown? My unknown is she's going to have 96 movie posters now. So that means that she needs how many band posters? What can we do to figure that out? Well, what I'm going to start by doing is taking this 120 over 100 and reducing that to simplest form. Okay? So I'm going to say 120 over 100. I know I can definitely divide by 20 over 20 here, right? So what I would do is find the greatest common factor. And I would say I know 20 goes into both because 20 goes into 100 five times and 20 goes into 126 times. Then it would be one and done. So my greatest common factor here is 120. So I'm, or I'm sorry, is 20. My greatest common factor is 20. So I'm going to divide by 20 over 20. 20. 120 divided by 20 is 6. And 100 divided by 20 is 5. So my ratio in simplest terms is 6 fifths, right? So all I have to do now is figure out how many times does 6 go into 96. Well, you can use a calculator for that. And in your calculator, you're just going to take 96 divided by 6, and you get 16. So that means 6 times 16 is 96. So now, in order to figure out how many band posters she should have left, I have to multiply my denominator by 16, right? And 5 times 16 is 80. So the answer here is she should keep 80 band posters, okay? So the biggest thing I want you to remember from this is that you had to set it up using WKU, WKU. I knew I was talking about movie and band posters. I knew that we had 120 movie posters for every 100 band posters. And then I had to subtract 24 from my movie posters here, right, to figure out how many she's going to keep. So she's going to keep 96 of them. So that's my unknown. Then I had to figure out how many band posters that is. In order to do that, I took this ratio and I put it in simplest terms. And then I just figured out 6 times 16 is 96. Therefore, I have to multiply my 5 by 16 and I get 80. So she has to keep 80 band posters. I hope that makes sense. Okay, here we're talking about butterflies. So the ratio of North American butterflies to South American butterflies at a butterfly park is 5 to 3. The ratio of South American butterflies to European butterflies is 3 to 2. There are 30 North American butterflies at the butterfly park. How many South American butterflies are there? How many European butterflies are there? Well, guys, this is a lot of information, and you really have to pick out what's important and list it to figure out what's missing, okay? So we know they're at a butterfly park, and we're talking about North American butterflies and South American butterflies, and that ratio is 5 to 3, okay? So I know I have North, I'm just going to put NA for North America, North America and South America, that's my words. What do I know about them? 
I know that their ratio is 5 to 3, right? Now they're saying the South American butterflies to European butterflies is 3 to 2. So that's another ratio, right? So I'm going to keep it here under my W. South American to European. What do I know about them? That ratio is 3 to 2. Now they're telling us that there are 30 North American butterflies at the park. Then we need to use that information to figure out how many South American butterflies there are and how many European butterflies there are, okay? So what's unknown? Well, I know I have 30 North American butterflies, so I need to figure out my South American. Well, this is kind of easy, right? I can say, how do I get from 5 to 30? I need to multiply by 6. So if I multiply my numerator by 6, I have to multiply my denominator by 6, I'm going to get 18. So there are 18 South American butterflies. Okay, 18 of them. So if I know that, now I can do this next part. Same thing under my U. Now I know there are 18 South American butterflies, so I can use that information to figure out the European butterflies. How do I get from 3 to 18? Well, again, I have to multiply by 6. 3 times 6 is 18. That means I have to multiply 2 by 6. I get 12. So then there are 12 European butterflies. So there we have it. See, that was a lot of information about all kinds of butterflies, and it was kind of jumbled, and we broke it down to figure out what was missing. So that's what you need to do. List it, words, what do I know about it, what am I trying to figure out for my unknown, okay? All right, this is a tape diagram, guys. So this diagram is comparing ratios of girls in the chorus to boys in the chorus. What is the ratio of girls to boys? If there are, and that question finishes down here, 50 students in the chorus, how many of them are boys? How many of them are girls? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I look at there's total of 50 kids, right? So I have 50 kids. Okay. How many boxes are shown in my tape diagram? One, two, three, four, five. I have five boxes, right? So 50 kids have to be split evenly into those boxes. That means I need to take 50 divided by 5. When I do, I get 10. That means there's going to be 10 in each box. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Is that 50? Yeah, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So there I have it. I'm going to fix that so it looks better. There I have it. So how many girls are there? Well, there's 10, 20, 30 girls, 10, 20 boys. Done. Also, that's a ratio of three to two, right? Three girls to two boys. I have three boxes here. One, two, three. I have two boxes for the boys, two. And if there's 10 in each, 30 times 10 is, or three times 10 is 30. 20 times 10, or two times 10 is 20. 30 plus 20 is 50 kids. So that's how we do that one. Tina says 6 to 8 is equivalent to 36 to 64. What did she do wrong? Well, 6 to 8 is equal to 36 over 64. Well, how do I get from 6 to 36? I have to multiply by 6. If I multiply numerator by 6, I have to multiply my denominator by 6. 8 times 6 is not 64. It's 48. So she should not have used 64. She should have used 48. So what Tina actually did was she took her 6 eighths and she multiplied her numerator by her 6, 6 times 6, and got 36. But the denominator, she multiplied it by 8, and she got 64, and that's wrong. So she just used the same number for her denominator and numerator. You can't do that. You have to, whatever you multiply your numerator by, you must multiply your denominator by, or else your um, equivalent ratios are not equivalent. So that was her mistake. All right, this is a blast from the past, guys. You need to use GCF, which is what? Greatest common factor, right? To figure this out. So they want you to use the product of, of the greatest common factor in a sum. So when you have 96 plus 36, you need to put those in a birthday cake, right? You need to figure out the greatest common factor here. 
Um, I'm going to say, I'll start with two because they're both even. Two goes into 96, how many times? 48 times. And two goes into 36, 18 times. Now I'm going to say 48 and 18. Mm, six can go into both of those. Six goes into 48, eight times. Six goes into 18, three times. Now I'm one and done. So my greatest common factor is equal to two times six times one for a greatest common factor of 12. So 12 goes on the outside. The bottom layer of my cake, remember, goes on the inside. And that's what I get. 12 times eight is 96. And 12 times three is 36. So I know I'm right. So you should have remembered how to do that. And that's in your notebook too, don't forget. And you have digital notes, don't forget. And an instruction video on just that, don't forget. So lots of resources. Okay, so another one. You earn $14.80 each week. A pair of AirPods costs $239.76. How many weeks will you have to work to buy the AirPods? Then say what the exact number is. So, AirPods cost $239.76 each week you get $14.80. So I gotta take my total cost and I have to divide that by how much I make each week to figure out how long it's gonna take me. Well, when I divide decimals, I need to, if I have a decimal in my divisor, I need to move it until it's a whole number. And however many places I move it in my divisor, I need to move it in my dividend and bring my decimal straight up. So my new problem is going to look like this. And I'm going to go over here with that so that I have some extra room. So Okay, so I need to figure out how many times will 1480 go into 2397. Well, one time. I'm going to subtract, and I get 917. Now I need to bring down that 6. So 6 is going to come down. How many times will 1,480 go into 9,176? Okay, to figure this out, what I like to do is I like to look at 14 and 91. And I know that 14 is close to 15. And then I'm going to try to figure out how many times is 15 go into 91. Well, I know that 15 times 2 is 30, right? And 30 will go into 93 times. And 2 times 3 is 6. So I know I'm going to start with a 6 here. So I'm going to say 6 times, okay? Um, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do that multiplication. And I'm going to take 1480 times 6. 6 times 0 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48. We group my 4. 6 to 4 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. Oh, this is a 0. 6 times 0 is 0. Whoopsies. There we go. Okay. So, I have 8, 8, 8, 0. I'm going to subtract that. I meant to write a 0 there. Whoopsies. Okay, we need to do our subtraction. 6 minus 0 is 6. I can't take 8 from 7, so I need to borrow. My 1 is going to be a 0. 17 minus 8 is 9. And then I'm going to have to borrow here and say 10 minus 8 is 2. So now I need to bring this 0 down. So I'm going to ask myself, how many times will 1480 go into 2960? Well, again, I'm going to look at that 14 I underlined and 29. And I know that 14 will go into 28. 14 times 2 is 28. So this should go into 2960 twice. Don't forget the decimal comes straight up. 2 times 8 is 0, or 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 8 is 16. Regroup my 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract, I get 0. So my answer is 16 and 2 tenths weeks. But you can't really just work 2 tenths of a week because you get paid at the end of the week. So the answer here is actually 17 weeks. Okay? Hope that makes sense.